guess what I'm making? This is what I'm making today. I haven't made bread since we came back from Arizona, but I feel like it's time to go back to making bread. I was noticing that our bill for bread was going way high. So, bread is made. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Did it rise the way I wanted? Perfection. Now, time to put it in the pan. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Look at that. So what I do usually, I like to start with this side. Uh, uh oh, it rose, it rose so much. <laughs> it rose super, super much. That's funny. I like to bring those bubbles down and then wait for it to bubble again. And then, so I'm gonna let it rise again to where it's gonna be an, is it an inch on the top? This is the bread is done, guys. Now I'm gonna bake it. Okay. Yes, you done? I want to bread. So today we made some homemade bread. Here's part two Wait, of our. Let me, let me. <laughs> here's part two of our differences of the English language. Uh, if you missed part one, uh, my wife is from Botswana. I'm from the Pacific Northwest, and there's various words in the English language that we actually pronounce differently. Number one, ketchup. I like to put ketchup on my burger. And what do you say? Tomato sauce. Tomato sauce. <laughs> Number two, our kids are learning homonyms in school, which is two words that sound alike, but they have different meanings. We pronounce them the same, or I pronounce them the same. I'm surprised that my wife differentiates. For example, number one, poor. He is a poor man, or please pour me some milk. Do you pronounce them the same? For the poor man is poor. He is a very poor person. And then for the pouring is poor. So it's poor and poor. Interesting. <laughs> How about metal and metal? He will he he likes to meddle in other people's business or winning a medal at the Olympics. Meddling in someone's business is called medal. And then you are, he's meddling in my business. And then for the one that you win is medal. Medal versus medal. Okay, so you emphasize the A on that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> How about surf and surf? A surf is someone who works for another person, and then the surf is something you go surfing on in the ocean. Surf and surf. Surf versus surf. Okay. S E R F is surf, S U R F is surf. All right. This is our weekly grocery haul. We have a budget for the week and we're just a little bit under our budget. To start off with, I'll start with the produce. Got some bananas, potatoes, butternut squash, red onions, yellow onions, peas. I also have mixed vegetables frozen. I'm not showing it right now. Spinach, bell peppers, black beans, spinach, and then i uh, got some tomato paste there and corn. And then i uh, got some beetroots back there. And then on the meat side, got two pounds of bacon, got some liver here, and got some beef bones, short, uh, short rib bones. And then also in addition to that, we have three dozen eggs, got some chocolate chips, got some uh, chips here, got some uh, cheese snacks for the kids, applesauce, I got some, have some uh, mashed potatoes, ramen, and then we got some flour for baking bread juice, pineapple juice, cranberry juice, pasta, and then assorted chocolates, and then butter. Our weekly budget is three, $400. I came in about uh, $368, so I have a little bit of room to buy more bananas this week and strawberries and blueberries. What are some cultural differences being married to a foreigner? Well, here's something that struck out to me. My wife's home country, which is Botswana, when they give birth to a child, they really protect that child and mother for quite some time, for at least six months, isn't that the case? Yeah. So oftentimes that child does not leave that household for six months. And oftentimes that child doesn't meet too many people except for very close family members, isn't that right? Yeah. So when a visitor comes over to visit the mom and baby, 
oftentimes the mom will meet the visitor, but the baby will stay back in the back bedroom. Isn't that true? Yep. Now, I've noticed that's quite a bit different. That, now, some Americans might practice that, but I've noticed just in the workforce, a lot of women work in the workforce and they have to leave the household immediately to go back to work and things like that. So that's something that's really struck to me is that people from her country, at least from her village, when they give birth to a child, they really seclude that child from the outside world for at least six months. Isn't that the case? Yes. So when it comes to grocery shopping, who does the grocery shopping? The person nursing the, mo the mother and the child. So usually you have a nurse. Uh, when I say a nurse, um, it, it's usually my husband here. But in my country, your mother, my mother or my mother-in-law or anyone that like that, when we have a child, they usually drop everything to come and take care of you. And it's, it's the culture. And it was shocking here that he was the one taking care of me when I was having a child. But it's a different culture. In my country, my mother or my mother-in-law, if I was married in my country, she would be the one to drop everything to care for me for at least three months. So that's how it goes. Yeah, when she gave birth, we tried to bring someone over from your home country to come uh, on a visa. And that <laughs> visa did not go through, did it? America coming here is so hard I begged I wrote everything they still you even had doctors right on your behalf because the, yes. the twins were high risk and yeah. they really wanted someone to take care of you and them as well didn't and they? America that was still working refused. full time and yeah I however personally never borrow money for anything in any circle. Oh my goodness, this video that I just watched is Dave Ramsey saying that he doesn't borrow money. And that's how my husband and I live like. Because one of the comments that people were commenting were like, oh, it's easier for you to say because you're rich. He's talking about Dave Ramsey. But that's not true because my husband and I, we are not rich. We are living the life of a normal american african family and we tried by all means to get out of debt one of the reasons why my husband and i decided not to get into debt was so that we don't put any of us in trouble in case one of us was to get sick or one of us was to die so we don't want to get into the point whereby i'm left with a burden of debt and my husband is dead or or I'm dead and my husband is left is left with to pay the money that we owe together. So we are in the, this thing that if we cannot afford something, let's just live our lives. And it works well. Yes, you're not going to be like the Jones. You're not going to be like your neighbor's people. And I know that people that say that debt is good. I don't think that being debt is good, but some people think that way. But otherwise, the, the life that we have chosen to be debt-free has been a life that has given us freedom. Right now, the economy is going through crazy. But even if everything was to crumble down, we'll still sleep like babies because we don't owe anyone anything. We don't have to think like, oh my goodness, we need to pay anything like that. Like we'll still be able to find a way to work a minimum wage job and still afford what we need to afford. It's been working well. So being debt free is something that I really recommend and it's been working us for us for a couple of times now. I have four children. I want to reply to this comment. I have four children and I've never experienced postpartum depression. And I don't know if this thing has anything to do with it, but it will make sense because for the first six months you don't do anything if you're just watching this video and you're like what is she talking about i was explaining that in my culture when you have a child the first six months you don't cook you don't do anything you have someone taking care of you at home and the only thing that you worry about is just nursing your baby and just like cleaning laundry for your baby a lot of times even that person can help you do the laundry so the whole goal is so that you can bond with the child and love on the child and and heal so we usually take six months off from working anything so the, your job is only giving birth and that's it my husband was explaining how that was a culture shock for him because i told him that for the first six months quarantine our baby and the mother so that they don't go outside in the world and they just focus on just being home the child growing for the six months and just healing for the mother and i don't know if they are related but for the first six months for me i've never really had to worry about heavy duty stuff like worrying about paying the bills 
worrying about cooking or doing something like that because someone else take care of you for those times so you can watch the original video to see what we are talking about so i don't know if they're related but personally for me i've never had postpartum depression when other women were on the line for husbands i think i was number one because i feel so blessed to have my husband and today this this yes last night he told me like you know what tonight just go in and sleep in and i'll make breakfast i said what are you gonna make he said oh just, just don't worry he does this a lot and i want to just take time to appreciate him so let me show what he made for us this is a new thing that he's never made before we i don't know what it's gonna taste like but just the fact that it's morning i'm ready for the day i don't have to cook for the kids i don't have to make breakfast and all these things wives if we have a husband that cooks for you appreciate him appreciate him because this man uh, a jam i'm telling you i'm waking up with excitement and happiness because i don't need to work today because my husband did the breakfast let me show you Ta -da! he woke up in the morning prepped this did everything i don't i haven't tasted it yet this is oatmeal whatever it's oatmeal that is baked baked oatmeal and everything so this is what he made for the kids i'm hoping that the kids are going to like it he says that the, the way you to eat this is with maple syrup so we'll find out so today i just wanted to appreciate this man he really makes life so easy marrying a man that does these things and just takes off weight from off your shoulders it makes marriage a sweet thing and what a blessing the lord has done for me i'll never stop thanking the lord for this man american i'm from the pacific northwest and my wife is from botswana africa and we've been married for seven years uh recently we went to botswana and she used some words that she and her fellow botswanans used some words that i have never heard of before so i want to share those with you are you ready honey yes okay when i walked in the grocery store i want to buy some sausage but I didn't see anything named sausage. What do you call sausage? Tell them. <laughs> Russian. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's called Russian. I don't know why we call it yeah, Russian. I don't know why But either. it's called it Russian. <laughs> okay, yeah. number two. I want to go to the gas station. I figured this one out. But there's nothing called gas station. What do you guys call your gas stations? Petrol station. Yeah, that, that at least makes sense. We Petroleum. call it petrol. Petroleum call it station. Gas. Things mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Now, this is a funny one. You don't have traffic lights. What do you call them? Robots. Robots. <laughs> <laughs> robots. So we got Russian, we have petrol station, we have robots and parts of a car. What do you call the trunk? Boot. Boot. It's called boot. And what do you call the hood? Bonnet. Bonnet. I've heard of that. That's an English term. Yeah. I don't I don't know if the rest of those are English terms. <laughs> boot yeah yeah you call it boot yeah i don't know why we call the sausage russian but it's a russian i don't know whether it was, it was made it was made in russia or if you know why we call it russian please let us know but a sausage is russian so we're eating a russian it's way <laughs> Today is a lazy day, so it does not involve a lot of cooking, but we are making use of the stuff that we have. So we have apples, as you see me. I have to wash them very well because we went apple picking in the fall. And we still have these apples. They have not rotten yet, so we are making use of them. So today is a lazy one day. Um, we had this pumpkin bread. My husband already made it at night after he woke up so it was already made for us and no he did not make it from scratch we just bought a pre-made package and we just mixed and then he added some stuff that he likes like raisins and yeah that was the lazy day and then this is what they are eating and i had to cut apples for them we have to make use of these apples because we don't know how long they can last for but we picked a lot when we went apple picking we went to take a lot because we also were using them for juicing for different stuff and we still have leftover and we're still making use of them so i cut it for the boys and they had with, with some apple juice our boys love juices especially no orange juice not apple juice <laughs> so they had with some orange juice so this is the lazy mother breakfast so 
if you like my videos by the way always give them a love and give me a follow if you are new and yeah see you in the next one and thank you guys bye here's another list of words <laughs> of words that sound alike but they're spelled differently and in some of these situations my wife and i pronounce them differently and some of them we do pronounce them the same so number one is course and course i like to play at a golf course as opposed to coarse, that material is coarse or rough. How do you pronounce them? Cos, cos. Okay, so you pronounce them differently? Similar, cos okay. and cos. Okay. Similar. How about metal and metal? He wanted gold metal versus uh, iron is a metal. Metal and metal. Metal, okay. How about trader of a country versus a stock trader? Traitor and trader. Okay, so you do differentiate. Here's three, vain, vain, and vain. A weather vein versus a vain glory versus the veins in your body. Vain, vain, vain. So we had the same day. <laughs> boulder and boulder. He is much bolder than I versus the large rock. That's a boulder. Boulder and boulder, same. Same. Mm -hmm. How about peak and peak? Peak as at the top of a mountain versus peaking. Peak and peak, same. Okay. Quartz and quartz. Uh, gallon is four quartz versus the gem stone that's made of quartz. I call it quartz and quaz. Wow, so that's a different. lot different. <laughs> How about main and main, the line's main versus the main line? Main, main, same. Okay. And how about weather or not versus uh, weather that's outside? Weather. Wh wh weather versus weather. Mm, slight difference. Mm -hmm. Sum and sum, the sum of a, as far as addition versus I have some money for you. Same, sum, same. sum. Mm -hmm. Pear and pear, we are a great pear versus the fruit. Pear, pear, same. How about hair and hair, the hair on our head versus <laughs> the hair that's running around like a bunny rabbit. It's hair, hair, same. Same. We pronounce words differently. And you were here all the time. What do you want to say? Mommy, hmm? what does it stop? Yeah, it stops when I, when I click on it, it stops. How do you pronounce this? Vain, same. How many Joshua. minutes it will get stopped? Oh. Joshua, how do you pronounce this? Vain. How do you pronounce vain. that? How do you pronounce that? Vain. 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 No, that's vain. <laughs> <laughs> so our, our six-year-old does differentiate between vain, vain, and vain. <laughs> so I guess we know where you got that from. <laughs> I am home alone. The boys, including my husband, they went out to <laughs> look at me. I forgot to snap my breastfeeding stuff. Basically, Garrett is still breastfeeding. And yes, I know some people say he's big. I usually win around 16 months to 18 months. Right now, he's 14 months. So, so he still have four more months or five more months, depending on what he does. But here I am. I'm home alone. Today, we are not cooking for lunch. We are eating out today. We decided to just have a day off from cooking. No, we cooked breakfast no let me take that back my husband cooked breakfast this time so we decided to just not cook lunch and just take it easy so we ordered our favorite food that i'm about to show you a bag i want michael to come and tell us where they what they bought come and tell auntie we, what we you bought. bought chicken rice and sushi chicken rice and sushi michael do you like sushi yeah no. Maka does not like sushi though. Like so sushi. I'm guessing that you're gonna eat something different today. I am very, very, very suspicious right now. I don't know if anyone can relate to this, but I have a very big suspicion that America is going to ban TikTok after the elections. My suspicion is that why are they so quiet about it? Even though it was bipartisan vote, they're very quiet. And not only that, here's my suspicion, hear me out. My main suspicion is that no big brands from America is on TikTok shop. TikTok shop is one of the best places for brands to make a lot of money. But you don't see any American brand, big brands on TikTok shop. And not only that, 
these brands i'm a youtuber i have 600,000 subscribers on youtube so I, I use youtube too and all the big brands are on youtube affiliate program which is similar to tiktok shop but none of them i see them on tiktok shop and part of me is that they are trying they are waiting to see if the government is going to ban it not only that there's a state in america i think it's state of montana if i'm not mistaken that has already banned tiktok so my thinking is that the montana is the foreshadow is the foreshadowing of what's going to happen after the elections i think right now they're just quiet because no one wants to not be elected i'm actually thinking that they are just quiet i'm eating sushi that they are just quiet so that we don't so that i mean look at most of us most of us like tiktok is our thing so they, i think what they are doing they are just waiting for for elections to be over after elections are over something in me tells me they're gonna ban it please let me know i'm not the only one please let me know i'm not the only one you guys i haven't gotten ready yet but look what i woke up to behind me this is my backyard and you know what this means there is no snow so it rained last night and it melted all the snow this is one thing that i love about living in the southern part of oregon that you get winter but also you get nice weather so it's not too cold where you cannot enjoy life but it's not too hot in the summer where you can, when you cannot enjoy life so you just have the perfect weather so if you are ever wondering where should you come to live southern of southern part of oregon is such a dream what a nice weather so yeah let me show you i mean it's still wet but the weather is just perfection it is still nice it is still nice and things are still covered it got windy so that thing they came off i'm like so yeah but we still have wet leaves so what is nice is that the kids can go outside and run around and play to people that say that 
men should not be cooking or doing dishes or holding babies or that it is not the man's job to do that. Your wife, you're either single or your wife does not have to. Yeah. Explain how Every this... married woman that I've known who wasn't happy in their marriage, that was a common re uh, complaint that they did not help with the kids or they did not help around the house. Yeah. I, I'm serious. I met a lot of women like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm so thankful for you. Thank you so much for cooking for us. So what did you make for us today? Well, let me say before I add that, a lot of men that I know, they think that once their eight hours is done at work, they're done for the rest of the day. Mm hmm but if, if you're a homemaker, especially a wife, you, your day never ends until everybody falls asleep. Yeah. And then you have to hit the reset button on the house. So, yes. So that, their work never ends. So you're kind of shortchanging yourself or shortchanging your family if, if when you come home, you just expect to do nothing. Yeah. So today we had uh, baked oatmeal for breakfast and we're having my favorite lunch, short ribs, barbecue I, short ribs. Who's cooking it? So, do you mind if I film you again? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So, what are you holding? What is on your chest? I mean, are you? Wearing? Yeah. This is my uh, parachute uh, outfit. <laughs> I walked into a gas station on our uh, trip back up from Arizona, and a guy looked at me and said, "What do you do for a living? Are you a parachute instructor?" I said, "No, this is for my infant." <laughs> But I forget to take it off. Yeah, that's the reality of being a parent. I went in the grocery store the other day, all alone. And I was walking the store with this thing on. And I was like, oh man. <laughs> so I turned around, took it off, and put it back in the car. Dad, that's so that you're a dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My husband is cooking and we are filming. And little Garrett is causing problems. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean the little one. Oh yeah. We did not eat out for how long now? How many days? Twenty days. Twenty days. So today was a special day. Maybe we should eat once a month out, and the rest we have to cook. So we bought teriyaki. Today we oh, am I just it? I ordered it. The boys said they didn't want any teriyaki rice. They just wanted sushi. Then when I'm driving home, they said they didn't want any sushi. They wanted teriyaki Oh, rice. no. Oh, no. Thank God you did, but... <laughs> so I bought a side order of rice and chicken just in case they changed their mind. Oh, I guess you are a dad. You know exactly how kids think like. You guys are very strange. Now they're saying they want sushi. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of sushi. Okay. <laughs> look at me. You see, I don't have legs. I want to ask you a question. When you look at me, be honest. Do you think I'm beautiful? Or do you think I'm fine? Or do you think I'm not beautiful? Here's the thing. I want to give you something. Some of you said, yes, you are beautiful. Some said, you are not bad. Some said, you are not that beautiful. Here's another question. Look at me. Would you date me? Or would you like your brother to date me? Some of you said, yeah. Some of you don't say no, because you don't have legs. What am I getting at? What I want to get in your mind today is that no matter what you think, it doesn't stop me from living my life. No matter your opinion of me, it does not stop me from enjoying the person that I am. That anyone can say anything. Yesterday, I received a comment saying that, oh, you need a renovation for your kitchen. Your kitchen is so old that, oh, you look so poor. Guess what? It doesn't bother me. So what I'm trying to get in is like, don't let anyone ever make you change the person that you are because they feel a certain type of a way. Like right now, my kitchen, at one point, as a content creator, as a, what do they call us? influencer one time i almost made my husband buy a new house and then when i was sleeping i asked myself wait a second why am i buying a new house and i thought to myself i said so that i can have aesthetically pleasing lifestyle because guess what when you're an influencer 
let me tell you people like to draw, to live a certain way through you they like to have that type of a life through you so i stopped it and then my husband and i we paid all of our debts we don't have any debt we are living freely so even if someone says anything about whether to renovate the kitchen broad cabinets that will never make me get white cabinets because of them and i want it to be a life lesson to some of you that people will always have something to say how many people right now look gorgeous i'm gonna act like i don't see you how many of you right now how many people right now look gorgeous but constantly they're changing their appearance because either someone has said something but because they don't feel enough i've come to the point where i feel like i'm enough and that if we ever have an imposter imposter syndrome and that's what they call it or you ever feel like you're not enough because everyone else is living a certain life certain way of life ask yourself a question how am i feeling and here i am happy with my brown cabinet with my no some of even though people make fun of my our kitchen some of the people say no i love your kitchen it's very nostalgic i'm like you see some people love it some people don't like it some people say i'm poor some people see me as rich because you know what i owe nobody anything i sleep at night peaceful that no bank will knock at my door and say we are looking for our money that i can retire tomorrow and still live a, live a good life with my kitchen so never let anyone make you look like you are less than so yeah that's the message of today bye what i eat in a day i'm starting with breakfast so i'm going to show you what i'm eating i did not make it because i was busy with doing something else and my lovely husband made it for me and he's still making it so i'm going to ask him what he's making me so what are you making me today i made you eggs bagel and banana and, and brewed tea yeah what tea is this this is black english english black tea english black tea what did you put in it I any means i didn't put anything in it okay in this family some days we eat differently today i'm not in the mood for my oatmeal but the kids wanted oatmeal so they ate all of them and now it's my turn to eat so someone wants to eat my bagel oh my goodness thank you honey thank you so much this is how i eat my 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 my, my breakfast i use this hot sauce hmm like the oops that's too much okay okay so stop eating sugar why not i'm here making everything ready what is it it's you not done? healthy sugar is not healthy sugar is not healthy yeah who said that bud okay. okay usually when our kids sleep late it throws off our day so it we end up having a late day if that makes sense so Thank you, Lord. Bigger? Yeah, it's not spicy. It doesn't matter whether you fed them or not. If we're eating late, no, you're eating with them. No, I did not put spicy stuff in the bagel. I do not eat eggs. I know you don't like eggs. That's why I put spice in them. He does not like eggs, this one. I'm a disabled mom without legs. Of course, people ask me how I made my children, as if children are made from legs. I'm a disabled mom without legs. Of course, people ask me, when are you going to get prosthetic legs, as if I don't know that I need prosthetic legs. I'm a disabled mom without legs. Of course, people assume that my husband does everything. Okay, he drives for us because I did not learn how to drive. But otherwise, other things I do. I'm a disabled mom without legs. Of course people assume that my children are not going to have legs. And these people, they need a lesson for genetics because my disability is not genetic. I'm a disabled mom without legs. Of course when I show that I have, I have children, people assume that they have different fathers because I cannot get married easily. I'm a disabled mom without legs. Of course people ask me if I'm married or not because they assume that I'll never have a husband. I'm a disabled mom without legs. Of course, when I tell people that I have four children, they frown because they only think that I should have one baby because I cannot take care of the four of them. I'm a disabled mom without legs. Of course, people think that I cannot play with my babies. 
I mean, it's able man without legs. Of course, people think that my children are lucky because mommy does not have legs. I mean, it's able man with legs and legs. Of course, people think that I cannot fly with my baby. I'm a disabled mom without legs, of course. I'm here to teach you guys that disability should not stop you from living your life. Today I'm making teriyaki chicken. This is the uh, marinade. For the teriyaki, I have a low sodium soy sauce. Added some uh, lemon juice. Now I'm adding garlic powder and then I just add some uh, maple syrup. This is without sugar. A little bit of pepper and garlic powder. Now let it sit for about 10 minutes. We're also in the mood for what I call sushi salad. And I just chopped up some tomatoes, green onions, and then cucumbers. And I'm going to season it with seasoned rice vinegar. It tastes really good. It's a nice little marinade. It's, a, it's like a little, little uh, salad dressing. So the first batch is cooking right now. I'm going to add the second batch. Okay, this is the leftover marinade. I'm just gonna turn it into a teriyaki sauce. I'll thicken it. Now I'm adding some cornstarch to thicken it up. This is what we made for lunch. Made some corn, peas, teriyaki chicken, sushi salad, marinated, and then we have rice and teriyaki sauce. Looks yummy. Let's talk about how you may think that you see while in reality you don't see. So I've been having a hard time seeing around and just like, I was not being able to see very, very well. Since I'm now learning how to drive, I was like, okay, it's time to get glasses. And guess what I got? I got, ta-da! So I got glasses. So let me try them on for you. How about that? So now it's crazy how well, okay, I'm trying to fix up my thing. It's crazy now how well i see like i see every little dog i see everything glasses are such a life-changing thing if you are that person that has a problem seeing very well i'll highly recommend that you get glasses they will change your eyesight you will start to see better than you think you see this as with, now i see everything like right now we're driving around and the way I see you guys, I see like crazy. How crazy is that? If you're having a problem seeing, don't think twice. Let this video be your motivation to go and get lessons. You will start to see. I feel like I was blind. That's crazy. 